The way you multiply rational expressions is the exact same way that you multiply fractions. You multiply across on the numerators and you multiply across on the denominators. So let's start with the tops. Rather than distribute the 48, I'm going to write it as 48 times 5 minus 4x in this way. The reason I don't want to distribute is because I want to be able to simplify things later and I want them to be in factored form before I simplify. So if I multiply across the tops, I get 48 times 5 minus 4x. Then I need to multiply across the bottom, and I get 4 times 10 minus 8x. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to factor things. 5 minus 4x is already factored. But here, with the 10 minus 8x, we realize that we have a greatest common factor between the 10 and the 8x. That greatest common factor is 2, so let's go ahead and pull that out of the bottom. If we pull a 2 out of the 10, we're left with a 5. If we pull a 2 out of the negative 8x, we're left with a minus 4x. The next thing we want to do is clean up the bottom a little bit. We have 4 times 2. Those two are common terms, so we get to multiply them. So 4 times 2 gives us 8, and then we still have the 5 minus 4x. Okay, now that both the top and the bottom are factored completely, so we're ready to do canceling. Let's start with the, with the constant terms 48 and 8. 48 divided by 8 is equal to 6. So when we cancel, we remove that 8 and replace it with a 1. And the 48 cancels, leaving us with a 6. Next, we move on to the 5 minus 4x. Since 5 minus 4x is a factor of both the top and the bottom, those two cancel. So now we rewrite, and we have 6 times 1. On the bottom, we're left with just 1. 6 times 1 is just 6, so we have 6 divided by 1, which is equal to 6. Now let's work on a slightly trickier one. 4x divided by x squared minus 9 times x minus 3 divided by 8x squared plus 12x. Okay, so once again, the first thing that we're going to do is multiply across the tops. And then we multiply across on the bottom. Once again, we don't distribute because we want everything to be factored in order to cancel. Okay, since we've multiplied, the next step is to um, factor. Okay, we look at the top. The top is already factored, so now we move on to the bottom. Let's start with the x squared minus 9 part. Since the first term, x squared, and the second term, 9, are both perfect squares, we recognize this as being the difference of two squares. The way it factors is the square root of the first plus the square root of the second. Times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. So that's x minus 3. And then we'll put on this 8x squared plus 12x. So now we need to move on and factor the 8x squared plus 12x. Okay, 
Looking at the greatest common factor, we see that it has an x, because of the x squared and the x, so it's x to the first power, and a 4 is common to both. So the greatest common factor of 8x squared plus 12x is 4x. If we take a 4x out of 8x squared, we're left with a 2x. And if we pull out a 4x from 12x, we're left with a plus 3. Now both the top and the bottom are completely factored, so we're ready to do the canceling of the like terms. For starters, we see that there's an x minus 3 as a factor of both the top and the bottom, so we can cancel those. Next, we see that 4x is a factor of the top and the bottom, so we also get to cancel those. If we cancel the 4x in the top, we're left with a 1. And then the 4x in the bottom just goes away as a 1 as well, but we won't write that one down. So cleaning this up a little bit, we see that it is equal to 1 divided by x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. And that is completely simplified.